With super prices now approaching delusion, enthusiasts are starting to look elsewhere for the perfect affordable driving experience. Should you settle for a Suzuki carry, or are there still some cheap hidden gems in the import scene? I put together a list of three criminally underrated Japanese sports cars. They're fast, they're tunable, and they all carry a low price tag. That, that was so cringe. In the early 90s, Mitsubishi was looking to make something that would slot between their entry-level Eclipse and the legendary 3000 GT, sort of a cheap sports car middle ground. The result was the FTO, a front-engined, four-seater coupe with a notably more stylish design than its gallant brother. Heck, it even won Japanese Car of the Year in 1994, which prompted Mitsubishi to create a special dandelion yellow edition commemorating the award. The FTO was offered with a few different engine configurations, but the most desirable GPX models produced around 200 horsepower from a 2-liter naturally aspirated V6 motor. If that doesn't sound very powerful by today's standards, keep in mind that entry-level Supers of the era only made around 220, and the FTO's displacement was severely limited by Japan's fuel-saving tax penalties. Of course, the brains over at Mitsubishi tried to work their way around these stringent restrictions by giving the FTO variable valve timing and a low curb weight of about 2,500 pounds. As a result, the fastest versions could still reach 60 in about 6.5 seconds. Oddly enough, it also came with an intelligent automatic transmission based off Porsche's Triptonic system. It could be driven in a fully automatic mode around town or as a clutchless manual if you wanted to do some more spirited driving. And most surprisingly of all, it could also monitor driving habits and adjust gear shifts to suit the pilot with something that Mitsubishi called adaptive shift control. Honestly, it sounds like a technology straight out of Minority Report. Of course, a 5-speed manual was also offered for the more hardcore driving fans. The FTO lived from 1994 to 2000 and was sold in a few overseas markets like Australia and the UK. But now, it's starting to reach American shores under the 25-year import rule. The few that exist here in the land of the free typically sell for around $20,000 to $30,000. Not a bad price for an authentic super competitor. <laughs> While Mitsubishi was busy marketing their little FTO, Toyota had already been selling an affordable tire slayer for decades, the Pixis. Well, I mean the Chaser. On the surface, a stock Chaser looks about as boring as it gets, but these mid-sized four-door sedans came packing one hell of a drivetrain under the hood. And the proof of that is that they've been dominating drift competition for decades. Toyota brought the Chaser to market in the late 70s, and for a long time it was exactly what it looked like, a dull, practical family hauler with just a little more power than its rivals. But in 1992, the dawn of its fifth generation, the Chaser was outfitted with a few major changes that transformed the entire car. Unlike other brands of the time, which were rigorously adhering to Japan's 2-liter displacement tax systems, Toyota decided to break free and produce a 2.5 and a 3-liter inline-six and stomach the extra cost. This lineup of bigger engines was used in both their redesigned sports car and a few of the models in their sedan lineup. That's right, we're talking about the legendary 1JZ and its bigger 2JZ brother. The Chaser was now a 276 horsepower, manual, rear-wheel drive, semi-affordable daily driver. <laughs> And in addition to being a stable grocery getter, the Chaser also proved to be a great race car, dominating the Japanese Touring Car Championships, taking home six victories and the 1998 season title, all while repping the most insane Tiger livery. Seriously, I want this thing on my motorcycle. 
Because it shares so much in common, many people refer to the Chaser as a four-door Supra. But luckily, you won't need to pay super prices to get into one. Imported Chasers tend to cost anywhere from 10 to 30 grand here in the States. Finally, it's time to talk about one of my personal all-time favorite cars, and one of the best ways to buy a JDM Legend for cheap, the Nissan S-Cargo. Actually, it's the Mazda RX-8, which is nearly as cheap as an S-Cargo. The RX-8 is typically shunned by enthusiasts for its poor reliability and even worse fuel economy. But if well cared for, these can make incredible track cars or even just an engaging daily driver. The RX-8 was introduced for the 2003 model year as a successor to the wildly popular RX-7. Like its predecessor, it was powered by a Wankel rotary motor. This type of engine uses a rotating triangle at the center rather than a series of pistons. The RX-8's 1.3 liter rotary made up to 232 horsepower and redlined at 9,000 RPM. And just listen to this thing, it, it sounds absolutely insane. A lot of Mazda fans were not happy with the exterior style of the RX-8. It debuted with reverse hinged doors, an optional sunroof, and a small wing. But personally, I think it's aged quite well in comparison to other sports cars of the era. Like every car on this list, it was also available with a manual transmission, this time a 6-speed. And the good news about Mazda's RX-8, it was actually sold in the United States, meaning it's very easy to find used examples at a low price. I've seen RX-8s being sold for five to $10,000. Sure, the rotary might leak oil, lose compression, spontaneously combust, empty your bank account, and steal your girlfriend, but hey, that's still a great price for a lot of fun. Did I miss your favorite underrated JDM legend? Let me know in the comments section and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future uploads and also so I can afford a Suzuki carry. Seriously, do you know how many motorcycles I could fit in the back of that thing? It's actually so dope.